Well, howdy varmints. In this video, we'll be condensing 24 gallons of sugar wine into 6 gallons of low wines. We'll take you through the process from beginning to end, including cleanup, and stay tuned to see how I turn my Kieser CO2 tank into a wastewater pump from my boiler. Welcome to Open Source Distilling, where time-honored tradition meets modern-day technology. This channel is dedicated to modernizing home distilling in an apartment setting. We'll be improving our process and updating our equipment in future videos. If that's something you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button and bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Let's start off by answering the question of why we would want to do a stripping run in the first place. Number one, it removes all the solids like the yeast from the sugar wine. Number two, it takes a large volume of low ABV sugar wine and turns it into a smaller volume of higher ABV low wine. Number three, it allows you to put more alcohol, absolute alcohol, into your boiler, allowing you to have a bigger spirit run. And number four, in future videos we'll explore the possibilities of adjusting the pH before and after the stripping run to facilitate certain chemical reactions that favor a better quality vodka and a higher yield. I'm going to take you through my stripping run process from beginning to end and I'll show you the invention I made along the way. Let's start off by siphoning into the boiler. I'm putting about 12 gallons in here at about 10% ABV. We'll attach my short column, which is 18 inches. It's an on-pack column and we've got a Teflon gasket here. Now the Teflon gasket has one, uh, one of the bumps shaved off on one of the sides and that's a, that allows for a flat contact with the modified keg, which is my boiler. We'll pop in my double coil condenser and hook it up to my bathroom tap. Next up is the quote unquote funnel that directs the distillate into my collection container. We have a stainless steel stock pot with volume markings on the inside and I'll place this on a piece of cork just to keep the heat of the distillate off the floor. Ensure that the needle valve is open all the way. My still is hooked up to a 30 amp ground fault interrupter circuit. This plugs into a clothes dryer plug that I had installed in my den, which is uh, where the breaker box is. Let's flip on the power, turn on the cooling water, and set an alarm for two hours. I'll be shooting for about 12 quarts or three gallons of low wines. Now while that's happening, let's clean the fermenters. Uh, we got a couple hours here, it takes about a couple hours to, to clean them up. Uh, cleansiness is next to godliness, and I rinse with water three times, fill it with hot water, and throw in a big scoop of powdered brewery wash. About 45 minutes into the run, we have our first drips, and I'll throw the lid on. Now, for the first time ever, I notice little puffs of vapor coming out of the top of the still head, and they're coming out of the hole that's drilled there to allow any pressure buildup to escape. And we're going to look at fixing this in a future video by uh, putting some mesh in the condenser. Now our stripping run is in full swing and we have good production right now. And there is a f quite an unpleasant smell uh, of the low wines coming out of this uh, collection vessel we got. Two hours have gone by. My vapor temp is sitting at about 98 Celsius, meaning most of the alcohol is gone. I've overshot my collection by about a quart or so, and my apartment is getting pretty stinky at this point. Uh, and the distillate was sitting around 54 Celsius, and that is way too hot for a uh, distillate. So in a future video, we're going to be looking at uh, creating a Liebig uh, condenser to cool down some of that distillate, uh, especially during a stripping run. Not such a big deal with a spirit run. Now uh, let's turn the power off and rinse out the fermenter with hot water. We'll remove the column and still head and attach this uh, invention that I doctored up. 
This is a, a two inch tri-clamp fitting and some pieces from Home Depot uh, along with some beer line that I had laying around. This is going to, going to allow us to pressurize the boiler and essentially pump out the wastewater through the uh, ball valve drain at the bottom of the keg. I'll open up the ball valve and check for leaks. Turn on the CO2 tank and open the valve. Presto, I'm happy southern bastard. We got some hot, hot, hot wastewater pumping action. Now I like it hot, but turn on the cold tap when draining hot liquids. The hot water is not good for your pipes. Now give the boiler a tip to get the last of the liquid out. Uh, I don't have a dip tube in here, so it's just a half coupling welded in. And you don't even actually need to pick it up like I'm picking it up. Just a little tip is, is good enough. Now the gas goes off, my contraption comes off, and the ball valve is closed. We're ready for round two. Second verse, same as the first. We'll siphon 12 gallons into the boiler, rinse out the buckets, fill with hot water, throw in PBW, reassemble the still, siphon out the low lines into my storage container. Turn on the cooling water. Sometime later, production is in full swing. I turn off and disassemble the still, attach the CO2 powered pump, and turn on the gas. Once empty of wastewater, I grab a hose, hook it up to my sink, and give it a good rinse, uh, making sure I get the sides and everywhere inside the boiler. I hook back up my CO2 pump, drain the boiler, and give it a little bit of a tip to get the last of the water out. As you can see, almost all the water is evacuated by the pump. We'll disassemble the pump, still head in column, and I've placed the boiler upside down to let it drain overnight. With a silicone hose, I'll combine my strip runs into my final storage container. And here's the final result, over 6 gallons of clear, colorless low wines with about 35 ABV. It's devoid of any solids, and this will store indefinitely in a glass container. We'll use these low wines in our spirit run video, which will be coming soon. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If this video is awesome, you know what to do. And please, if you haven't already, consider subscribing. It really means the world to me. I love you guys very much.